I'm Tyler Polchow, my gamer tag is TP, and I play for Optic Gaming's second team, Optic Nation. So Tyler, how did you get involved into esports? Uh, it was about five or so years ago. I was a senior in high school. Didn't really know too much about the whole competitive scene or esports as a whole. Uh, just r would randomly play Call of Duty with my friends from high school and stuff like that. And then from meeting people online, they taught me about this website and this you know competitive group called Major League Gaming and Game Battles. So I started competing in the competitive ladders. Uh, just started playing with these people that I met online. Uh, very unique experience meeting people and competing together online when you don't really have never met each other in real life. So started playing there. Started playing in the pro circuit ladders online, had some success there, and just sort of skyrocketed from then on. Did you play any sports growing up? Yeah, I actually played soccer for about 14 years when I was a kid. I played uh, varsity in high school, club soccer as well. So definitely feel like it helped me transition over when I started playing competitive gaming. Uh, just sort of that teamwork aspect, being you know a good leader, being a good, having a good attitude, and really that work ethic transitions over very well when you're in any sort of competitive environment. Can you go into a little bit of detail about how like real sports can help the esports community and teams as a whole? I mean, one of the biggest things is just being fit. You know, if you're just kind of being a slob, sitting in your chair all day, it's it's not really good for you. You really get that your thought process right. Um, I feel like a thing a lot of people don't understand, especially with competitive gaming and video gaming as a whole, is how much of a a mental strain it takes on you. You know, when you're playing for that long every day, you know, eight to ten hours playing the same situations over and over it can get monotonous at times so you really have to be strong mentally it's a lot it's really a mental sport compared to a physical one obviously yes you're using your hands to you know maneuver with the controller etc but uh, you really have to be in that right mindset to be able to be consistently good for that amount of time so definitely you know having those practicing same situations you know we practice just like anyone else would everyone you know you go to soccer practice you know two or three times a week or whatever we do the same thing, except pretty much every day, practicing situations, figuring out what we're doing wrong, what works good, etc. So. so can you go into a little detail about what separates a pro Call of Duty gamer to someone who's just really good at Call of Duty online? Uh, I think the biggest thing that people don't understand is uh, the difference between the public matchmaking and the rule set that we play. We, uh, we work with the tournament organizers to create a universal rule set with all the different regions to make a game that we feel is uh, as competitive as possible. So, you know, no rocket launchers that can blow up three people at once. We really eliminate a lot of the things you would call uh, fluky in the game, I guess. You know, no crazy explosives, etc. So I feel like the people that are just really good at Call of Duty are just good at maybe a different rule set and maybe if they transitioned over to ours they would struggle a little bit more. And I just feel like overall what sets the pros apart is they, you know, they spend a lot of time with the game obviously, but they really know the minute details of how the game is supposed to be played, the speed that it's supposed to be played at, and which situations where you want to play a confidently, passive, a lot of different things go into it. So what's it like being on an esports team? Uh, it's pretty amazing. I mean, it, most of us are in the you know 18 to 23 year old range. So for me, individually, it's the best college job I can have. Try and take as many classes as I can part time at uh, Cal State San Marcos. So you know, able to chip away at my degree as well as do this, have success with tournaments, and overall just have a lot of fun. Uh, all of us that do this obviously love video games, and it's really a, a unique group of people. You you know you you know you interact with each other a lot online. And you all sort of culminate at tournaments like this, where you, it's all just a great time, great competitive environment, and obviously playing for a lot of money is fun as well. So can you take us through a life of your day as a pro gamer, like what you do when you get up to when you go to bed? Uh, being a pro gamer is a lot about the routine. Uh, it's really about, from a day-to-day -day process, yes, we spend a lot of time practicing with our teammates, but it's also a lot about uh, creating content, live streaming to the people that follow you. A lot of us have pretty decent followings on social media. So what we do is we'll live stream our gameplay, play with fans, interact with them, make them YouTube videos. You know, I like to do tips and tricks, you know, how to play some of the competitive maps a little bit you know, uh, more consistently, little tips and tricks here and there. So we get some good views doing that kind of stuff. And then other than that, we have the Pro League, which we play online against the other pro teams. It's a 12-team league, so lots of games going on there. And then overall, especially for a tournament like this at COD Champs, we practice you know anywhere from six, eight, ten hours a day, depending on how well you're doing, to make sure you know everything you're supposed to do, know your role on your team, and just move on from there. Okay, speaking of tips, can you talk about your favorite map and maybe some tips on playing on it? Hmm, favorite map? I'd probably have to say Retreat is my favorite map. Uh, only hard point is played on that. So I guess some tips on there is you really need to know your balance between using an assault rifle compared to a submachine gun. Uh, I think 
using a right balance of those. You have, a, have to have a certain amount of players that are comfortable playing extremely aggressive, maybe not getting as many kills as one another, but putting on that aggression for the other team. And while your assault rifle players kind of look over them, bait your teammates a little bit, sit a little bit farther back, and just peek, pick people off from afar. So it's really finding that balance between you and your teammates that will really create that balance and able to get you a lot of points while your SMGs sort of sit in the hill. What are some of the challenges when learning a new Call of Duty game every year? And this one actually had exosuits and exo abilities implemented as well. Yeah, we see every year a lot of the pro players sort of, you know, rise up or drop off. And especially this year has been one of the most dramatics, obviously, like you said, due to the exo movement and all those different abilities. Uh, I think the thing that's really changed this year is you have to be extremely well-rounded. Traditionally, the other Call of Duty tiles were a lot slower. You know, you can't be, you weren't double jumping, sliding around the map, doing a bunch of crazy double jumps. In this game, you really have to you know, be very aware. Communication is extremely important because if you are slacking on your cards, if you call something out a half a second too late, that guy could be off the map already. So it's really a lot of different things. You have to be much more mentally focused. Uh, in other games, I could say you could probably you know chill out a little bit more. Yeah, every single series in this game, you have to go 150%, or else your teammates will probably you know get the better hand of you. And do you have a favorite Call of Duty game you like to play competitively? Hmm, it's a tough one. My favorite Call of Duty game is probably Black Ops 2. Uh, I just had a lot of fun playing that game. Felt like it was the most well-rounded for competitive Call of Duty and created a consistent result. You know, someone that's better is going to win nine out of ten times, whereas some of the other Call of Duty titles I feel like is a little bit more fluky and it could create some different results.